Are you ready to get woke? Welcome to the Woke as F**k podcast with your host, Alex Lazarev. Hello, we're back again. I've got some special guests. It's been such an insane week and I've had such a connection with these guys. It's, I honestly don't know where to start. So much has, so much has happened this week, it's insane. But let's just start with, who are you guys? Wanna go? I'm Paul. <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> Kathy. You know Kathy's so good at this. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Paul and I are energy healers, consciousness raisers, based in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And we are here in Ecuador with this amazing guy. Wow, this is the gift of gifts. Um, the cherry on top of the process that we went through here. And we're here in Ecuador, Vilcabamba, to... Um, go through a process and meet our soul family, our tribe, our clan, and rock the planet. I'd say, is that summarized? Yeah. Mm. Good. It's pretty yeah. good. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Ditto, ditto, <laughs> ditto to what Kathy just said. Um, yeah, we're based in Vancouver, Kathy and I. Um, and as Kathy said, we did energy. We do energy healing. We teach. We do something called Diksha, Oneness Blessing. It's about awakening. And the quantum touch really gets people in, in touch with your, it gets you in touch with your internal energy mm -hmm. and how to feel it moving through your body and how to connect to the universal field. And that's when it gets really interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that balancing of the masculine, feminine energy right, the earth cosmos and activating the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. And then that's when life like just takes off. We have mm -hmm. so much deeper connection and love. And really, what are we doing here, right? Relationships. Yep, that's Everything's right. relationships. So, you know, and other than that, you know, um, actually it was in the Gene Keys. I don't know how many people are familiar with that, but they talk about what is genius, you know, in this world, we think left brain. Well, you're super smart, your IQ's great, you're a real go-getter, you're gonna make things happen. But it's actually not that on this level. Mm -mm. Pure genius is a quality of life experience and connection from the heart. Mm -hmm. And that's really all we need to know because that's what it's all about. Like, when we take our last breath, you won't be thinking about, geez, I wish I would've got that car or shit, I wish I would have made a hundred, another 100,000. You'll be thinking about those people that you shared those moments with mm -hmm. that were meaningful and the heart connections. You're going to think about love. You're going to think about love and it'll be a relationship. And you'll probably think, did I show up for my life? Not what I cho achieved, but was I really present with the people I love? You know, was I, did I live my gifts? Did I really come out into life and risk and give all of me in service? Mm. Yeah? That's, what will, that's what will hit your head. Mm -hmm. And then I can tell a story about that later, but I drowned once. And just before I was dying, as I was drowning, first I said, you idiot, <laughs> right? What were you thinking, you know? I'm swimming out in the ocean and I'm in the middle of nowhere and I'm thinking, my poor mom, I'm drowning here and no one will, they'll all go, my legacy will be, what happened to Paul Scott? <laughs> so first you're gonna think of what a dumbass you have been in your life, right? And then you'll have a life review and you'll review everything so fast it'll blow your mind and this is what will go through you. Mm -hmm. You will think about just what I've said. And there's an old statement, die before you die. We don't have to wait till we die to live fully. We can do it now. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. And this guy, totally soul brother. <laughs> just, I don't know. Wow, it's been amazing. Hey, what a connection. And that's another thing. I think when we start getting that higher vibration, mm -hmm. we start to recognize our soul family. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you recognize those people. And it's, it's cool, right? Because sometimes it's, you know, 
the mm. how does that thing go about blood relations it's thicker blood's than thicker than water yeah you know and all that kind of thing and then we feel this huge responsibility to have to make it work with family members mm -hmm. right and then you find out like yeah we're gonna do that anyway we pick them but then you find out when you let go of that we're a global family and there's a whole soul family waiting for us out there. Mm -hmm. And Sasha is one of those examples. We've met Sasha and you just instantly know there's this connection right in the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that you have to really be careful of, and it's beautiful what Paul talks about, he just blows it from the heart, you know. Um, but one of the things that can get in your way is, is not uh, giving yourself your room for your humanity. And when mm -hmm. you don't do that, you beat yourself up so badly that you don't progress because of the shame that you're, you're heaping on yourself. Mm -hmm. And so really the steps along the way, I think, are, are just like when you, when you know you've crossed the line and you've hurt someone and you're about to make all that story up that, oh no, it was their fault, and, then, and, then, and, then, and, then, and all that stuff that covers your ass. And then you just, if you don't do that, if you just go, wow, I, oh, I blew it. I, I, and I, I, I can't even apologize right now. My ego's too, too protective of, of like, you know, my humanity. And, and I'm just, but at least you're not going out and re-damaging some more, doing the protective thing. And that's getting familiar with your humanity. That's getting to that place where you're going, okay, my first step isn't to go out and to be, you know, Jesus or something like that and apologize to everybody who I, you know, every bug I get, a, I step on. But it, it's, to, it's to just like to be with yourself in your humanity and to go, wow, wow, look at what I did. And, I'm, and actually the progress here is that I'm aware of what I did as opposed to going into all my excuses and boom, you're into a new field of like, oh, and then forgive yourself for your humanity some more and just keep doing that, dive in and dive in and dive in because I've seen arguments go from little tiny things to blasts, nuclear blasts for no reason other than you don't give yourself your room for your humanity, you don't just swallow it and just either be silent or, or, or just stop talking, stop talking. Don't say any more. Just walk from the room if you have to. Just don't say any more. Just stop, because what I call those are nails in the fence, right? When you do something that's irreparable damage, you're hitting a nail and you're putting it in the fence. And there's a story of a mother who taught a child, you know, every time he did something rude or bad or, you know, something that was just like not creating character that she thought would, would serve him as a, as a good man, she said, you go, pound a nail into the fence and you're thinking the exercise is to pound the nail right and then she you know they got all the way along the fence and then she says now what I want you to do is is start taking them out now he's got to crank the nails out of the fence right and at the end of it you know he's kind of exhausted by his own behavior and it could have taken years I'm not sure about the story uh, line on that but at the end of it you know they're standing there and she said, so you've taken all the f nails out of the fence now. And, he, and, and I think that the nails came out when he did something good. And she said, yeah, but look at the holes you have left in the fence. You either have to go and fill them up or, or leave them there. But they will, that fence will never be the same. That piece of wood will never have the integrity, the, the, the innocence. And that's what we're all here trying to do is not step on each other's innocence not smack each other in the face when we're least expecting it verbally or energetically or any other way. And that's getting familiar with your humanity and loving yourself in it. Mm. Well yeah, said. wow, well said. wow. That's beautiful. And it's interesting, you know, when you're talking about, the other thing is how are we present to our emotions? like? How are we able to sit with them and let them teach us what they are? And then they transform and alchemize all on their own. And that's done with presence, sitting in it, feeling it all, not running away from it, allowing the, the uh, gift that it wants to bring 
to bring it to you and it's just a completion of something way back so uh, mm -hmm. yeah our teachers in India um, would always say any feeling fully felt is bliss yeah. you know and it's true it's true it's not the easiest thing to do but it's true if you can sit in it like just sit right in the middle of the fire and not act it out not like be addictive mm -hmm. or run or you know project on someone but just sit in it like a buddha like take full responsibility mm -hmm. for your own emotional state i think that will change the planet because it's emotional reaction yep. that causes so many things right because people are Guilty they're just shame. you know they just don't know what to do with these mm -hmm. uh, their emotions mm -hmm. yeah <sighs> i really want to touch a little bit on um kind of what I've been going through this week with you mm -hmm. guys has been so, so profound. Because the big thing I've been dealing with was, uh, and my listeners know, had a really traumatic childhood, really, really brutal. And even though I've had certain awakenings, you know, uh, with, you know, my place in the universe and with the divine mm -hmm. and all this, wonderful, you know, but the body's still been holding on to this trauma, like in a really big way. And I think a lot of people out there are, have, have, you know, have this going on because we're all traumatized. We're mm -hmm. all traumatized to some degree. So what happened with me this week was this angel, I never even heard of quantum touch at all. And he's like, let me do you a session. And it was just the most amazing. He, he just, it's like he was barely touching me, you know, like, you know, like super gentle. It was energy and just, I'm walking straight for the first time in 39 years. Mm -hmm. I'm walking straight. I mean, literally, I'm, I'm in like in a new body. I'm in a new body. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And then, just when I'm like, oh my God, it's unbelievable. Then he gives me a, a, a blessing. Diksha blessing, it's called, right? Diksha, yeah. Diksha, or oneness. Or oneness probably blessing. more popular okay. oneness blessing. He gives yeah. me the oneness blessing. And it was just this tremendous amount of um, energy ah. coming in and prana and just clarity and just peace. And it was... Um, yeah, it was, in, it was insane. It was like just, I was just shh, walking around like, ah! and I'm still, I'm still like processing, but it's like I've integrated, uh, you know, the, the, the awakening experience I had on October 29th. That was all up here, kind of God, oh my God, everything is one. But now it's, I've just brought it into the body and I feel like just the stillness and presence and it's like I can just relax. There's nothing to, I can, mm -hmm. I'm just here. It's really profound, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't even, blah, 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 I can't even, some things it's difficult even to say. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. how do you say that for 39 years you're traumatized and finally you're just letting it go and this peace and bliss is coming in and you can just mm. sit and just be. Mm -hmm. mm. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So, wow. maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, this the quantum thing and the and the deep yeah, just these guys give me a real oh man whoa right here I just, oh. I don't even have you, to you talk. just actually just you here. know what's really cool about this too is as you're speaking I just as you know I got this insight and I was like wow that's that's really profound you know when the body's holding trauma and we're tight we can't let stuff in mm -hmm. because it's it's almost like the sign is out you know stops here. You know, yeah. that means that no one can get in and connect with me and I can't get out to connect with anybody. And that's what really came through strongly. What really came through for me, though, was the spine. Like it was mm -hmm. like, you know, one of the first things you do is get into the occipital ridge. But all of the nerves come out of the spine to all of the organs in the body. And then the, the, uh, the, the main uh, pranic tube goes right up into the parietal lobe where the seat mm -hmm. of the fear is yes. in the brain yeah. and where right. the occipital ridge is so when you're <laughs> balancing the occipital ridge in the spine you're releasing the traumas that are are being held and then you can get in there and go really go like what paul does yeah. he does he paul is amazing yeah it's a bit like <laughs> for me the spine is first always the spine alignment it's like when I was a marine engineer, uh, one of the engineers came, I can't even believe he told us this, but he says, we always talk a little bit, like, how was your days off, you know? He said, well, I uh, spent it working on my diesel truck. He says, you know, 
I tore everything. I took off the pissing heads, you know. I ripped this out and I ripped that out and it took me days and then it was all apart and I was still trying to figure out what was wrong with the with my engine. He said I realized it had no oil. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh Checking the spine is like checking the oil, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because when, when, once the spine starts to align, you don't know, like Kathy said, you don't know, like, what's happening. And we're supposed to have a flowing spine. It's supposed to be almost like a dolphin, you know? Like, and we get so bound up and rigid and tight. And when you start... Scoliosis free, is yeah, the extreme example yeah, of getting bound up yeah. to the point where the spine starts well, you're just twisted, twisted in different directions yeah, right? through that, the emotions. That's a yeah. huge one. Um, yeah, and, and once the spine aligns, you feel like, holy crap, you feel like a new, a new person. But what Kathy was also saying was, once your alignment's there, then you're, gee, then the kundalini from the base can start flowing. And now all of a sudden you're having a different relationship with things. And it's after the spine's um, aligned that then I'll explore other things with people. Because usually it starts coming out somewhere else. Well, it's so interesting because I'm just realizing you know, our spiritual development, our awakening is linked to our physical health and mm -hmm. development directly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I used to think like, oh, obviously, you know, if you're overweight or unhealthy or you've got some serious health problems, of course, your energy is going there and your physical pain and it's hard to really connect. But your spine is not correct. Like you're... And mm -hmm. spine is all twisted up, and you're in pain, and things are, and you're walking like this. Of course, of course, you know what I'm saying. So this whole, this whole, it all just comes together, and it just yeah. makes sense mm -hmm. how they're 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 keeping us down, basically, because we're, we're physically we're ill, we're misaligned, like all, we, everything mm -hmm. is off. So of course, even if you have the knowledge of something greater, some greater wisdom yeah. or love or truth, it's hard to bring that in when you're fucked yeah. up. Exactly. Yeah. Really like hard. you know, when you're in pain, right? Yeah. All, what do you think of pain? It's like you're not thinking of, yeah. geez, I want to be awakened or I want to <laughs> open. It's like, can you give me a her. pill for this thing? Like, yeah. it's killing me, right? Yeah, yeah. so that it's, yeah, it's totally that. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, too, to take it to another level in that um, I don't know how many of your followers are familiar with Ram Dass, but he was like a very big spiritual teacher mm -hmm. in the States with Timothy Leary and they, they started this whole movement. Psychedelics. I mean, yeah, the psychedelics, but he actually, Ram Dass took it further. He mm -hmm. went to India and he did a lot of stuff, this guy. Like he was a very big spiritual leader in the States. And uh, then just not that, a few years ago, he got some crippling illness where his body just started mm -hmm. to like, just he couldn't control it anymore. And, and he's like, I want to check out. Mm. Even with all that training and all that practices, because, you know, anyway, I'll finish the story. So he <laughs> wants to check out and his guides come to him and say, Ramdas, you signed up for this dude. It's your curriculum. Why not take it? You know, and just to realize that, wow, you know, when I stop resisting my life, and what's happening in my life and what's happening in my body. I just stop resisting and accept it from that kind of place. I can actually start to eventually be here because there's only here. So every time we release, we're more here. Yes. We're more who we are. Release more, we're more here. We're more who we are. There's nowhere to go. It's like, you know, that was the new age thing, mm -hmm. kind of, oh, just be positive. Or a lot of our generation going through that, it was like the spiritual two-step. You know, I'll just get so evolved. I'll just like beyond this human experience. No way, man. We're in here for a reason. We're, we're, it's about integrating back into the body with our full spiritual awareness of who we are. And then we become the divine human. That's it. That's it. Yeah. This, is, this is what I've been slowly coming into and realizing because there's certain uh, divided teachings that, you know, there's certain teachings that are like, no, no, this is all an illusion, it's not real, you're just that, and that's the half-truth. Yes, we are divine, but we're the divine spirit in human form, yeah. and it's merging that in and bringing it into the person. That balance. And that's, and that's, that's literally what I'm going mm -hmm. through right now. I had the yeah. realization that I am everything, like yeah. really profoundly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on October 28th. And then I was a little blown out, and I literally was just in a state of absolute just being, and there was no, per there was no person present. It just checked out. That mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. 
But now it's like, no, no, that was great, but I am a person and I am here for a reason and I have work to do. So let's, exactly. let's, and, and I can feel that not only is it happening, but consciously I'm allowing the divine qualities, absolute love, bliss, acceptance, non-judgment to burn away the parts of the ego that just aren't needed or necessary. They're not divine, basically. They're not mm -hmm. divine. And from and be, and so and so bringing that in, it's just it's completely changed my re relationship with everything, with the universe. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. total abundance now. There's no charge on it no, at all. Absolute yeah. abundance, like in every way. There's nothing to worry about. And one of my slogans, which I'm going to get a T-shirt made for, literally, it just says, "It's not up to me," <laughs> because I have absolute faith in in the divine plan. Like it's just everything is unfolding, mm -hmm. and I know <laughs> that, and I just it's not up to me. Mm -hmm. Do you know that I can pick what what parts are more exciting? Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 God doesn't. Go, no, no. You have to do it this way. <laughs> no. There's a plan, like yeah, plan, but I, right? I can do it this way or this way. Yeah. That, that's the freedom. Yeah. I can do it any way I want, but I'm I know where I'm going because that's where, that's just my path that I've mm -hmm. we we together have co-created me and God together uh -huh. have have, have co-created this, and so it's an absolute knowing of like it's a partnership between me and the divine. Mm -hmm. I am it. It's a partnership. Total trust. Just sur and it took a while to be able to surrender. It was yeah. like slowly, slowly Huge. surrendering and a little bit yeah. more. And oh my, can I really trust? Can I really? And then, then when it happened, it was like, that's it. I give up. Yeah. I give up. And now, but now it's like, okay, so that's all great. Now it's time to be a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a, a godly being. Yeah. And that's what I feel. I'm, yeah. That's my path. Do you wow. know that the, the, one of the <laughs> t-shirts that I, I used to laugh at all the time is the one that says, it's all about me. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. that one? You've got to do <laughs> that, that t-shirt. Well, no, wait, wait, we can change it. It's all about myself. <laughs> okay. Hey. Right. It's all There's about big my self big yeah. self. self. There we right? go. No, we're going to make a bunch of cool spiritual things. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, oh, you're just touching what, on what a, what a, what a, what a, wow, what a, what a, what a process. A big what a last, Woo. What a last month, you know? Just yeah. like the awareness burning away the bullshit parts yeah. of the ego, losing the person identity, uh, fake, like straightening up, and then the bless. I mean, geez, I mean, wow, mm -hmm. what a month. This has been the most amazing month of my life mm -hmm. by far. And it's like my whole life really is beginning now from this yeah. place of peace and clarity. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just a, it's like it was all a preparation. It was all like I was just had to go through everything I had to go through just to get to this point to wake <laughs> up to the truth of my being and why I'm all of it. Yeah. And here I am now. Yeah, and it's just just beginning now. Yeah, and it's really wild, you know. I, <laughs> Kathy and I are actually a part of the <gasps> AA club. We got a tribe. Yeah, Ooh. we have our tribe. We've been to their meetings in a while. A long but time. At the beginning, man saved our life. Yeah, like. Yeah. I guess I'm 27 years now and you're 21, 21 years. And that was a big game changer, holy mackerel. But um, one of the things that hit me hard, really hard in that process, was when I just slowly started to trust that the divine will actually has a plan for me, mm -hmm. you know? Because there's this kind of like, no, I've got my plan, you know? Mm -hmm. And I want it and it's better, no, you know? And I think we all go through that, right? Every day. And it's like, <laughs> and if I give it up to you, then there's, I'm just a hole in a donut, right? Like I'm nothing, forget it. And it's really, that's the ego, you know, just holding on, right? And I had this like amazing experience where I did for a moment, you know, it's a process, right? I did for a moment, I let go of everything for a moment. And then what came to me was exactly what I wanted all the time and never knew it. Mm -hmm. And when it happened, it brought me so much joy. It was insane and it was really simple. It was something really simple. And then I, it was just like popped, right? And I was just like, shit, I spent so many years like, you know, I got it figured out, right? I, I got, when I hit this amount of sales and, you know, I get this house and I, you know, I get this and this and this, it's all gonna be great. And then we all know, right? You get there and it's like, oh, I guess this isn't it. Toss, next, you know, next, next, next. You do that enough times and you finally realize nothing externally is gonna make you happy. And, and when you let all that stuff go, then what's really waiting for you has a chance to happen and spirit can bring it and it brings such joy to the heart and you're just so alive so much more here when I let go of control and it just helps you know they're like little 
processes and you just trust a little more and the heart opens a little more, a little more, you know? Yeah. It's like, get out of your way. Get out of your way. That's one of the names of Ram Dass's books, wasn't it? Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get yeah. out of your way. Yeah, that's exactly. It's fun. It's fun, eh? Especially with <laughs> Sash. Yeah. How's it feel? It feel, feels like a nice flow? We're having a great time. Okay, good. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it feels like we're having a great That's all that's important. Are we having a good time? That's all there is. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. Um, <sighs> so, I guess I was curious. Tell us like a little bit about... I wanted to ask you this before, but I was just curious. Did you, for both of you guys, like, what was the beginning of sort of the spiritual path for you guys was it that moment you had in AA where you were like oh wait there's something more here I mean I'd just like to know when, when did it begin what was that moment of like oh mm -hmm. there's something mm -hmm. more than just working and being and playing and per you know what I mean yeah mm -hmm. what was it I felt like I was um living with like a plexiglass wall between me and life right and um I was uh on top radio show uh, with my former husband in Vancouver, BC. Uh, we gave birth live to our daughter on the air. Um, we decided not to have a nanny, so I gave up my career. And I'm being an at-home mom. I'm devoting myself to this child, right? It was, it was, a, it was not a sacrifice, it was a devotion. And um, she w is adorable. She, and she was adored by so many as she was born. And, and, you know, all this is happening. And then one day I'm sitting across from my mother-in-law, smoking a cigarette, drinking a beer. And my daughter, who I dote on, spend all my time on, is a game. Mommy, mom, mom, mom. And I'm like, what? Like, I'm, I just can't, like, what more do you want from me? You know? And then I realized there was just this moment of, like, after the what, it was just like, I'm here for you in no way at all, except physically. I'm going through the motions. I am not present with you. And I'm looking at the cigarette, and I'm looking at the beer, and I'm like, fuck. Holy shit. Still took a while to get sober. Mm. But that was, that was the turning point. That was just like, man. You know, this is my most precious being, you know? She grew inside of me and I'm, I'm this far from her. Mm. And even when I'm this close to her, you know? And that was when I started to feel the wall, really feel it. And I went through, then I started reading books, endless self-help books, tapes, constantly. You know, my husband's going to work at 4 o'clock in the morning and I'm getting up at 4.15 and I'm just reading and doing and praying and doing. I did um, The Artist's Way, you know, the, the pages. Yeah, the right, the, really cool. I did 10 spiral notebooks over a few years of just like, at first I was, couldn't even write. And then it just, the creativity started to flow again. And that's when you realize how many pieces of you have gone dead and you're just living from a little tiny chunk of yourself. You're not even breathing all the way down into mm -hmm. your stomach. And it's a terribly long process to really pull it all together again. It doesn't happen overnight, but the first step is still glorious and it still is more wonderful than difficult. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's, you know, and I eventually met Paul at a New Year's Eve party, uh, not at an AA meeting and, um, and it was, uh, yeah, it's like, oh, it's you, you know? And I had to get ready for that for like eight years between my husband and Paul to, to understand who am I? Like, what do I want, you know? That's the big, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's the big S in self, yeah. Loving myself. That's what it's all about, sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, amen. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Are you Finn? I'm You're done. good? Okay. Yeah. yeah, for me it was, um, we were swapping stories about childhood, you know. Um, pretty horrendous, like Mark goes up there pretty high. Anyway, at 12 years old, I just dove into drugs. <coughs> bless you. Bless you. <coughs> Again. Again. <coughs> <coughs> 
Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that left. was good. <laughs> Two in a row. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like at 12 years old, I just jumped into like full on into drugs and alcohol. And by the time I was 15, I almost overdosed. I don't know, quite a few times. I had alcohol poisoning so bad I was hanging on to life by a thread. So I was just basically trying to kill myself, really. And then a glorious thing happened, LSD. Mm. <laughs> and it saved my life. LSD saved my life. Because the moment I went into consciousness and I got that sense of oneness, I realized I wasn't alone. And I, rem I started to remember who I was, like who I really was. And um, it just, it took a while from 15 to about 17, did a lot of LSD. And, uh, and then one day it was just like, okay, it was done. And it, in my town, it's a small town, nobody even knew what the word yoga was. But I was fortunate <laughs> to have a father who was just so eclectically out there with KC, UFOs, <laughs> yoga, I mean, everything, right? He was crazy. And uh, he, um, he gave me all these yoga books, you know, Yogananda, Paramahansa, Krishnamurti. I got a Kundalini yoga book. I got Yoga for Americans. Ben and Joe Wider, probably no one knows who they are now. Do you, have you ever heard of them? I've heard of them. They started the IFF, International Federation of Bodybuilders. But they used to put out all this positive stuff like how to be confident and all. And they were really about affirmations and mirror affirmations and all that kind of stuff. So I was eating up everything I could. So from 17 to 18, almost 19, I stopped everything. I did nothing. I went celibate, which is kind of weird, right? Grade 11 and 12 when you're like surrounded by all these crazy girls. And um, it was like what I did. So I was like doing yoga every day. Um, got into martial arts pretty heavy. I was also into weights and I had a weight club and I was a trainer. And um, I did these deep, deep meditations. And at 18 I had this experience of just going inward and realizing I was a spirit and the body was just a shell. It was like, oh my God. And then it just went into, you know, cosmic awareness. Like I'm one with everything, I'm universal. And that was the point where it just really rocked it for me. It was like, and, and I got there through the body. Mm. I got there through yoga. I got there through meditating, not like, you know. So I was able to take the experiences of the medicine of LSD and integrate it and have a physical like experience of it in my body th through that and that was where yeah that was where it really began for me I was like this is better than anything I've ever done like there's so much magic in here it's so expansive it makes anything here just seem like a speck of dust when you're in it's just like wow and I'm out for fun like I want to have an adventure like Give it to me, right? What? So why not? It just made sense to me, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's the thing. It's like the greatest adventure is discovering who we are. It's yeah. the most fun adventure of all. That's yeah. why it's so crazy when I see people just wasting their time with yeah. whatever, booze, drugs, watching football games, silly jobs. Just people are, a lot of people are just passing the time. Yeah. They're just passing the time until they get old and check out. And it's like, you're missing the funnest part of all. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know. Our avatars in India said um, most of the majority of North America and Europe too, you know, a lot of people in the world, you spend most of your time managing your suffering. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know it. You don't feel how much pain you're in. Shall we do our suffering skit? You remember that time we thought about the suffering skit? Oh, Have yeah, a nice yeah. day, honey. How are you going to manage your suffering? Uh, well, first I'll go to Starbucks. And I'll, <laughs> I'll throw some like heavy duty caffeine and cream right <laughs> and then of course i'll be pissed off in traffic right that'll that'll like give me some adrenaline um that that that'll make yeah. something work oh, right yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i'll yeah. scream at the maid i'll uh, i'll run to the i'll be snotty to the grocery store person 
I think, yeah. yeah, I think I'll cut someone off in traffic too. I think that's yeah, yeah, a good idea. Yeah. Of course, when I go to work, I always have judgments, resentments. You know, that works really good too. <laughs> that, that like, you know, helps, helps with a little adrenaline. And I'll, yeah, when I'm off of work, straight to the bar, yeah, you know, yeah, right? Have yeah, a few drinks, yeah, you yeah. know, pound yeah. some of them back. Yeah, I think I might uh -huh. be my lover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then it'll be like, I'll just switch on the TV. So see you around 10? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Zone out. Yeah. And then I'll pass out. I won't go to yeah. sleep. I'll, I'll pass out. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. A, okay. That's how I do my suffering. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Suffering. <laughs> so <laughs> there's... <laughs> that's good. That's actually funny. <laughs> so, so um, you know, they said to us, okay, so imagine if you, most of your life, if you really looked at it honestly, you're managing your suffering. And that's why your life has no meaning. Mm. You don't feel like there's any meaning in wow. your life because you're spending the majority just managing your emotional state. Trying to be something yeah. all the time. And then he said, Never it's like you're anything. on a hamster wheel and you're, you're running like this and you've got the cheese, you know, and you can never quite catch it. And then behind you, the, that's the future, right? I'm, I'm chasing the future. This nice piece of cheese I think is coming later. <laughs> Meanwhile, the cat's behind me, and I'm like, fuck, and I'm running away from it, right? And that's how it goes. That's like people can live their whole lives like that. And then they said to us, if you realize the cycle you're in, that you're not really living, mm -hmm. and that your life really doesn't have any meaning in the, in the bigger picture, then you can get off, let the cat eat you, and suck the marrow out of your bones and you'll be here. That's all your fears, right? Like just let go of the future, the past, what you think's gonna do it for you, and just be here with all of it and know that you have the resources in you to just actually get present because it's in the now. Heaven's in the now. It's all in the now, just what it takes to be here. But I thought that was a great analogy. That's great. Just just the concept of most people are so busy managing symptoms. It's not something I really thought about before. So yeah. as soon as you said it, I was like, yeah. Right? Well, look yeah. at our society. Look how many pills we've got for Dude. headaches and this and that. And, and what people are shoving into their mouths and drinking at and watching things. And air. Yeah, it's crazy. When you really see it, mm -hmm. you just go, yeah, you know, wow. And then if you reflect in your own day, geez. How much of my day am Dude, I this is so avoiding, fucking, this right? This is so fucking profound right here that's been said. It's just like this, just that, just that piece there. Mm. If people get that, they can look at their life and go, oh, mm -hmm. right. Because it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be that way. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. No. You know, one of the uh, greatest tools. Big, right? <laughs> 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 You're freaking me out, man. This guy's so awesome, he just trips me out. I'm just like... <laughs> what I was going to say was, one of, the, one of those, the greatest tools for keeping you in your management of your suffering is the need for significance. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like the, the egoic piece of ourselves is like you wake up in the morning and it's just like where in my life am I at an advantage over anyone just to put some <sighs> breath in the body because if you feel like you haven't got an advantage over at least one thing or one something or one person you feel like I'm going to get just swallowed up and trampled and beaten up here on this planet right so we go about in the day trying to assuage that peace and that peace is the need for significance so you'll walk in and somebody will say good morning and you know you can go you could say good morning or you could say yeah good morning and oh you know what happened for me today and then boom that person's activated into their need for significance they may not act it out with you but they walk down the hallway and they're talking to somebody else and the need for significance gets volleyed all over the place 
everybody one-upping. How much have I got? How much do I need? Will I be able to keep it? You know, in an Alcoholics Anonymous, in the 12 steps, the 12 and 12, at the end of step seven, they talk about that too. That all of our behaviors come from the fact that we think we have got something we need to keep. And if you try to take it or I, if I st look like I'm going to lose it, I'm going to go ballistic. Or there is something out there that I believe I need. And if I don't get it, I'm going to step on you. I'm going to do whatever I have to to get it because my need for significance, it's like it goes back to ancient times, sitting in the circle in the tribe. If you were such an asshole, you got kicked out of that circle, you were certainly dead. And that's the way it is. And so you want that, you want to be getting your needs met as you know, you want your spot in the circle, but you don't want to over, but you, you know, and so then you're always on that balance thing. So as we go through that suffering piece, as we go through like, oh man, I'm suffering. Well, what are you suffering from? Go into your head, talk to it. Like what's happening? Well, so-and-so said something. Well, okay. Well, what does that mean? Well, yeah, what you make it mean. Every, you know, everything has the meaning we give it, right? And we come from this need for significance to give the meaning to the things that happen to us all day long. And then we go home at night and there's this constant mental tally. Did I make it today? Did I make it? Have I got a little, have I risen a little bit in the, in the hierarchy of the tribe? Will I be all right? You know, it's not what we're doing today. It's that day we know we're going to die. And we don't know what's going to happen between this day and the day we're going to die. And will we be humiliated in the passage of that time between that day? Course in Miracles talks about it all the time. You are scared to death of your death. And it rules your life. And that's crazy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what kind of comes up with around that too for me is... You know, we're talking about what we're, we're always planning for the future, running from the past, we're managing our suffering. The other big things, a lot of what Kathy just mentioned, is we're running from our fears. Mm. And then we have a fear for survival, like, and what we think we need to, mm -hmm. to survive. And then you add on to that, I need to be significant. I need to feel important because I don't feel important. Right? Mm -hmm. So something external is going to happen. And it's really kind of crazy because then we come into interaction and it's just this whole, you know, piece coming together of, geez, what can I get from you? What can you get from me? Can you feed my ego? Can you make me feel a little more important? Uh, are you going to be able to give me some of what I think I want and need? And oh my God, you know, and then you have a moment where that's gone completely. And there's just two human beings sitting with each other. And there's no need for any of that stuff. Mm. It's like a spiritual experience. It's like, it it's is. so beautiful. <laughs> then we see our true beauty, you know. Mm. And we just get to resonate with all, without all that shit, you know, flying around. You just get to actually be with another human be being and feel the oneness and the connection and the love. And you can't put a price on that, you know. But it's, it's a journey, you know, it's cleaning the window, you know, cleaning the window. We're all cleaners. Yeah, we're all cleaners. Scrubbing away. We're all cleaners. <laughs> yeah, clean, clean, clean. Um, yeah, that's, I think, one of the biggest, that was one of my biggest aha moments. And I think the thing that keeps everybody trapped is need for significance. Mm -hmm. When you realize that just because you exist, you are worthy, because mm -hmm. you are, mm -hmm. There's nothing mm -hmm. we have to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're already the divine. Yeah. We just have to remember. Yeah. Uncover the programs. And when it hit me, I know the exact moment I was with my friend. And it just I just woke up one morning and I was like, I'm me. Mm -hmm. I get to be me forever. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. It doesn't matter if I lose my money, friends, house, all these things. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to be me. And I... And I'm so fucking awesome, even if I'm <laughs> killed, guess what? What? Still going to be me. Yeah. That's in right. the next one. So there's absolutely nothing ever, ever, ever bad could really happen to me because I'm always going to be me. 
mm -hmm. forever mm -hmm. until the end of time. Mm -hmm. And I like who I am. Wow. Yeah. When that one hits you, mm -hmm. oh, I don't have enough money. How am I going to, oh, this person doesn't like me. Oh, I really want to date that person. doesn't exist. It's irrelevant. There's nothing, to, there's nothing to accomplish. I so relate to that, Sasha. You know, it's like when I crashed and burned in my life, went bankrupt, got divorced, lost my house, lost my job, really high paying vocation, everything. I was back at my mom and dad's basement. <laughs> Just sitting there going, I should have plastic sheets. I'm going to wet the bed. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, oh, and I always remember that song. Kathy will know the name of it. How I got here, I haven't a clue. Margaritaville. <laughs> Margaritaville. Yeah. That was playing on the radio, and I, I was just sitting there in the bed going, How did my life come to this place? <laughs> like, I had a Jag, I was a top realtor, I had a house in West Van. You know, I had a wife, I had, you know, this and that. And it's just like, wow, it was a weird trip. But you know, <laughs> when everything's taken away, like you were saying, all that's left is you. All, you know, when I'm not my things, when I'm not what I'm propping myself up with, with that image, right? There's only me. So I finally really got to connect to this guy right here. That was awesome. Gift. It's the, it's, and, and you can see how they don't, we're just not supposed to have that experience because as soon as you have that experience and you realize the truth of your being, you're going to stop spending money on all this shit. You're mm -hmm. not going to yeah, you eat it. junk food or take pharmaceuticals you're or blow your, uh, any mm -hmm. of it. You're just going to be mm -hmm. like, oh, well, I have everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. the only thing you'd really need is, okay, you know, until you go breatharian, mm -hmm. yeah, you got to have, you know, you got to find food yeah, and yeah. water and all a place that. to sleep. The basics, yeah. sure, we all need that if we're in the human yeah. body. But anything above that, really? Extraneous. It's just like, now Doesn't I got matter. more to give. Superfluous. Awesome. I can support projects. I can support people. I can be in service with yeah. what comes through. People. And I know I won't misuse it, you know, because those needs aren't on it. If the significance right. isn't on it and the need needs. for importance and the survival shit, if all of that's Status. gone, then money's called currency for a reason it's supposed to flow it's the currency. and if you're holding on to it you know right yeah. yeah it's like if we're holding on to it we're going against the laws of how things work it's a currency that's supposed to flow and the more you give the more you receive that's right yeah, yeah. and i've been seeing this so much it's, right? it's at a point of just like yeah that's just what it is now mm -hmm. yeah but um yeah the, the, the fear and um and the the lack uh, it really has a stranglehold on. Yeah, I got a, a I got people. a tip. Any of you guys out there doing private sessions on people in person who are still giving you money? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what uh, we did is um, yeah. I I would take the money into my hands and I, I would have, have them money. cover. Um, I almost feel like grabbing some money just my to show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so good. I can can I do that? Yeah. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, grab some money. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, good old George Washington. So. Um, this is your money. You're my client, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, this came about because um, Paul and I used to do sessions together until I got too busy at the back end, and uh, he got really good at the front end. And uh, we just did, went and did our dharmas, and um, uh, and he'd leave me to collect the money because it's an awkward thing. Money is such an awkward thing. Let's mm -hmm. get friendly with money. Love money. It's your friend. So... I've got these people to say, okay, well, thank you very much for your... <laughs> <laughs> so, you, well, you kind of feel people going like, yeah, you know, bit. it's a little bit, a little yeah. bit, right? And then they're kind of like, okay. Yeah, they give it to me. <laughs> and then I say, look, let's just cover, cover my hands with yours, okay? Yeah. <sighs> as long as this is the currency on this planet by which we exchange our gifts... May this flow abundantly through my life and yours. And may the gifts that we shared today that are represented by this currency expand exponentially mm. for us both. Mm. And you can feel the, the energy in the bill.
because a lot of people have fear on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It shifts and it just turns into yeah. a whole different I like you. energy. Yeah, one person said, I'll pay again just for this. <laughs> 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 right? And it does. It's it's like you're trans we're transmuting the fear around money by blessing it and just That's like awesome. being just being with it. And it just I, I have no like it's just a complete heart thing now. Yeah. For me and Kathy. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And it helps people, too, that are giving because it's like they feel, you know, they don't I, feel I, like they're losing something, you know. I used to feel guilty taking money, mm -hmm. you know, because I was charging a lot of money for the courses I was teaching. Yeah. But now, because I'm so full of just joy and love mm -hmm. and just everything is just, I'm just, there's nothing I really need. I just want to mm -hmm. help everyone. It's such a different place that it's like, I just want to focus. I just only want to focus on that, and whatever money comes is just part of the flow. And it's 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 just mm -hmm. it's just literally a representation of how much good I'm doing. So, so when yeah. you're really at service, the money is simply like, oh, I must, oh, I have a lot of money. Wow, great! I must. The universe is just literally going, oh, you've, you're helping a lot of people. And then from that place, you would only ever really use the money to help more people, because there's no, you don't really, you're not thinking, oh, I sure would like a Lamborghini. It's just not in your reality. So you're just like, oh, okay, great. Well. Who can we help with it? So it's it literally just, yeah. and then the more you're at service, the more flows to you. And mm -hmm. I can see it happening. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Just how it is. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. I'm going to do, do that. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, That's I just amazing. gave you that money. Put it in your hand. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. And now you bless it for me. Mm hmm. Oh wait, verbally? I was just yeah, verbally. Oh, yeah, verbally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, just Bless like money. tap in, like uh, you got connection. Sorry, yeah, thank you for this. It was basically, um, who's paying who now? I'm paying you. Yeah. Uh, no, I just gave it to you. You're no, paying me. You, yeah, you received it. it. We got it. Yeah. So, um, thank you so much for this um, this money, and as long as money is the the way we count currency between us, may we all be uh, mm -hmm. blessed with absolute abundance with more money than we possibly know what to do with so that we may, that we may enjoy ourselves and help other beings uh, in their journey of awakening with it. Mm. Mm. How How does that feel, Sash? <sighs> Just be, yeah. yeah. <sighs> Very different. It, it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's always been dirty. It's, it's, it's always yeah, been this dirty it's been like thing. this dirty yeah, thing, right? Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's like, oh yeah, this yeah, is great. It's just yeah. like it clean, purifies it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. It's all energy. There's, it's, it's energy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's yeah, the yeah, current yeah. you see. Yeah. The current it's you the see. It's the currency. Hey, right? The current you, you see. see. Yes. So, I think we could go on forever, but <laughs> it's their last day. They're flying out. They got shit to do. But this was a good first time. It was a good thanks first time to hang. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so thanks. Much fun. Dude, Thank so you much for fun. listening, everybody out there. Yeah. Yeah, blessings to you and your lives. Please tell, tell anyone out there who resonates, like, I know you got a lot of stuff going on, but if people want to reach out to you, I know you guys do. Tell them just a little bit about what you do and how they can find you if they want to work with you guys. Okay. Administrator. Well, our <laughs> website is Canadian, so it's quantumlife.ca. There's a few things going on there. We have a meditation called Anahata, which is the heart chakra. It's a breath meditation on the 12 chakras. Um, all ends up in the heart chakra. Everything always does. And you can purchase that there. And Sasha did it, got blown away. And it's a very good practice. If you can't do it daily, do it every other day, weekly. You know, once a month at our home in Vancouver, we uh, have uh, guests come and we do a cacao journey with the Anahata meditation. And um, we teach quantum touch courses. And we're, we're working on our own program, a course in oneness. And we'll be doing some distance energy. Uh, energy healing is real. And, um, and I am in love with a pulse electromagnetic field mat, and that's quantumlife.swissbionic.com. It's all on our website. Come and see us. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. See you in the next one, guys. Thanks so much for being here. Um, since we're still rolling, the one thing I would have asked real quick would be just for somebody who really wants to delve deeper into them, their true self, spirituality, what would be just a, a good one or two starting points, maybe a book or maybe a practice, just to get them really connecting to their true nature a little bit, you know? Yeah, there's um, a book, and it's just, 
I don't know, was it this place or where I'm at? It just kind of went out of my head. And I'm trying to remember it. it. What I give people, I think the most important place to start is the breath. Like yep. the breath will get you there the quickest. You just become aware of your breath and how it enters your body. And just may, you know, be aware how deep are you breathing? Are, is there holding patterns? How much are you taking in? Are you filling up your chest? Are you filling up your tummy? And then how easily are you able to let go? Like, or are you holding on in your out breath? You know, because our out breath is how we control emotion. So by forcing an out breath, you're actually pushing emotion down. So just starting to be with your breath and, and getting familiar with your own body, like how am I breathing? How's it flowing through me? And where, where am I blocked? You know, mm -hmm. how, much am I, how much am I taking in? I think that's uh, a very powerful way I'm a huge Course in Miracles fan, and they have a workbook practice every day. And I'm trying to think of this breath book that's like a six-week journey into breath. Um, I'll make sure I get it to you, okay? Because sure. it, I'll put it some, in a link on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I would recommend, I give it to all my clients, and I say, look, do this, it'll change your life. And it's really a nice introduction to how to, how to work with the breath. It's very well done. Um, and yeah, for me, a... Uh, Course in Miracles is, is amazing. And I tell people, get ready for your world to be rocked. Because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a pretty deep dive in the pond. Mm -hmm. you know. But it's amazing because it's a daily practice. So starting a daily practice of some kind, however it feels right to you. Like even if you build a little sanctuary space in your home, somewhere where you can go and let everything go, and just be in the present moment and notice your breath and then you'll start to notice the thoughts, right? And what you're looking for eventually is to find the gap, right? Between a thought and a reaction so that you're starting to find the gap in the middle because that's where a choice point is. So if people, you know, you start getting into your, your breath, into your body, and you start seeing the thoughts and you become the observer of your thoughts, there's this gap that opens up and it's the most profound thing because in that gap, you can make a different choice. Like imagine when you're really heated up, right? And you, and you just say something really dumb, you know, or you, you get reactive and you set something in motion and you kind of go, geez, you know, but it feels so automatic, you don't know how to stop yourself. When you find that gap, you have a choice to choose something different. You can choose love instead of fear. And that's real practical. Mm -hmm. And that's something we can all do. And it's so simple, it sounds like, yeah, whatever. But it's absolutely profound. If you find that gap, and it'll start through your breath, body awareness, witnessing thought, find the gap, and then you can make that choice that will really empower and serve you and others, you know, you can choose love instead of reacting, you're becoming proactive in your life. In, uh, in Conversations with God, it's just described as um, choosing to um, act as the highest version of yourself in every moment. Yeah. And I've had those, and, and now that I'm more aware, it's like uh, there, there'll be some decision in life, and I'm like, mm -hmm. ah, I could do this, but this, even though the ego's like, oh, you know, this is harder, and I'd have to spend more money, but I know my highest version, the divine consciousness, would do this, even though that's going to cost me five thousand dollars, and I could do it without. You know, even though this is going to yeah. hurt my ego in some way or have something yeah. where the person's like, "Oh, I don't know." The highest version would do that, and you just, I, I've just been choosing that, and that's the that's what we're talking about here. Just yeah, choosing the exact thing, thing that is your highest version. And it takes it's a, a while. It, it, it's a practice. It's a practice. It takes a while to work into it because also in the gap is silence, mm -hmm. and the silence is where we can listen to that higher self. We create actually a gap where we can hear and we can feel the heart, wisdom, and in the, just sitting in the gap, 
the universe becomes available to you. Everything comes available to you. Because it's not these habitual thoughts and habitual reactions and you're just going through the motion. You're actually starting to become proactive in your life. And now you have choice. And it can take your life that's going this way and just whoosh, take it out like unbelievable. Fucking awesome. Thanks again. It's been great. Okay, bro. Oh. Mm.